Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Matthew Rasmussen, and in this presentation, I'm going to describe conditioned taste aversion. Conditioned taste aversion is an aspect of classical conditioning, and that happens to you and I, um, probably has happened to us many times over in our life. So what is conditioned taste aversion? Well, what it is, is essentially you eat some sort of food, you get sick, and then you basically never want to eat that same food again. Okay? So that's conditioned taste aversion. How does it go down? Well, it goes down via the same mechanism as classical conditioning. So let me explain. Let's pretend that you're hanging out and uh, you want to eat something. What do you see? You see your, uh, your roommate's leftover tuna salad and it looks super appealing. You don't want to make anything. It's already pre-made. So you gobble it up. Mm really tasty. Oh, I never had uh, tuna salad taste like that. Actually, I haven't had tuna salad in a long time. So you eat it, tastes great, but what happens? Of course, there is bacteria in that tuna salad. You later get sick. Next day comes along, uh, being sick, what I mean is you vomit, okay? Very, very nauseous feeling as well as vomiting. Um, and then what happens the next day? We well, walk by, oh great man, I'm hungry again. Oh, what's going on? My friend left his, my roommate left his stuff out. Ooh, that's that, that's that tuna salad. Ooh, no thank you, right? So that's conditioned taste aversion. Let me go through the steps, because it, it's very easy. So, originally, you're going to have these same five key terms as you always do. So, the NS is the neutral stimulus. Neutral stimulus here was originally the tuna, the tuna salad, okay? the way that it tasted, the way that it smelled, okay, everything's associated with that. Again, it's neutral stimulus in that it will not elicit nausea. You're not going to get nauseous um, the first time you taste it. The U.S. is this bacteria. The bacteria that is actually in the tuna, okay, because it was left out for an extended period of time. So you have the bacteria that's in there. And that bacteria is naturally going to create a response within you. Your body's going to have a response from that bacteria. And that, I'm just going to put sick. Nausea, vomiting, however you want to say it. I'll just put sick. Easy for people to understand. Now we have the conditioned stimulus and the conditioned response. Conditioned stimulus is going to be the same as the neutral stimulus. And that's the tuna. And then the conditioned response in this situation, that's going to be essentially the same thing. Now, you may not vomit, but you're going to feel nauseous. You might get that same exact feeling. So I'm just put sick. Okay. So what we have here is we have those same five key terms, and now we just need to go through that progression. Okay. So let me map that out for you. Just erase this all. Make it very easy. Now, in this situation, I'll go through the before the during and the after. Um, obviously, the, the the before isn't mapped out completely as it, as it typically is, but um, we'll get the point here. So the before, again, we start with the neutral stimulus, and that elicits nothing. So the tuna salad elicits nothing. Um, not going to elicit any nausea, or hopefully it's not going to make you vomit. Then what you have is that you have, uh, the unconditioned stimulus will elicit the unconditioned response. Obviously, this should occur. Uh, we didn't test it, but if you just have the bacteria in and of itself put into the individual's stomach, that's going to automatically elicit the, um, the nausea in the individual. So we have that. Perfect. Now, we need the during. During conditioning. And for the during... We have the NS, oops, followed by the NS, followed by the US, paired closely in time, and that's going to elicit the UR. So again, let me explain. We have the neutral stimulus, which is the tuna. You eat the tuna, and then within a few hours, you're going to get sick, okay? Um, because you have the bacteria. So you have the neutral stimulus, you have the bacteria, and that bacteria is going to automatically elicit the sickness. Okay, So 
the interesting thing is here is that what you might be s detecting is that the neutral stimulus is followed uh, you know immediately by the bacteria however you don't even know the bacteria is in you and then you get sick maybe even you know an hour later maybe even it's a few hours later well the key is is that what happens is people are naturally they're predisposed there's a biological predisposition to associate food or something that you consume liquids with being sick so there's this predisposition that researchers have found that where if you have some sort of ingestion food or liquid and then you get sick at least within a 24-hour window it's very likely that you're going to associate what you ate especially if it's a unique flavor or something new that you've never had before with that sickness okay um, Again, we don't even essentially know that the U.S. is there because the bacteria, we don't know, know that it's there. The only reason that we know that it's there or something is there is because of the end result. We got sick. So what we did here is we paired it one time. And sometimes that's all you need to have condition taste aversion occur is one pairing. And then the after is essentially that neutral stimulus. But here it's the condition stimulus will elicit the condition response. So the next day comes along, you see that same tuna. That tuna is going to automatically elicit some sort of representation of that original unconditioned response. And so you may feel nauseous, you may start to gag. Uh, overall, it'll be a very gross feeling that you have associated with that tuna. Okay, So that is the natural progression. And again, this, this after phase can last for an extremely long period of time. Sometimes the individual, it can be just, you know, weeks or months. Sometimes it can be years. It can be an entire lifetime.